Good morning, it's Susan Cook with Rialto Academy and EXP Realty coming to you with um, your Dulles Area Association talking points from our CEO, Christine Wendell. And thank you for joining me this morning again, Karen. I know it's been a while with yes. the title, Karen yep. <laughs> Kofo. <Yeah. laughs> Yay, that's right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, I can't believe we're in February already. You know, I know. Right. I know. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm seeing a great deal of heat up in the market. That as Yes. You say. Don't you see that? I, do. I do. Yeah. Right. I feel like spring came early. It did. It came about the last week of January, which is yeah. interesting. You know, but usually we see it about a month later. In uh -huh. our area, but this year it um, multiple offers, escalated yep. pricing, yep. quick close, cash mm -hmm. offers. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yep. yeah. So I'm really excited about what spring's going to bring. It's going to it's going to take some expertise and some yeah. um, maneuvering around. So let's get right into this because we do have a lot of things to chat about with okay. um, with the Dar talking points. Okay. So Christine sends out to the ambassadors every week, and I apologize that we have I have been a little bit remiss in coming to you guys and reporting these changes every week. Um, so there has been some MLS Bright MLS leadership changes. Bright MLS recently announced a change in their executive leadership, and that's their CEO. Um, efforts to substantially improve customer support and overall experience with the system. So for more information, there are some links on our Dulles um, uh, uh, area.com um, website. Um, and you can always look at our DAR Bright MLS resource page there to find out about that. But that's not really surprising. We've had you know, a difficult, very bumpy transition, mm -hmm. I think. And yep. there's a lot of unhappy, unhappy realtors out there and we are the subscribers. So, you know, I can understand why they would need to make some changes. Um, on your career track, register now for Bright MLS on-site training clinics on Wednesday, February 13th. Um, DAR is going to be offering on-site Bright MLS training clinics conducted by Kim Mingo at the DAR Ashburn, Virginia location on Wednesday the 13th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And you can register right straight on the site. For members, it is free. So please get out there and, uh, you know, if you're still struggling, you need some additional um one-on-one -on -one training and you and you learn better in a classroom setting, DAR is providing training for you um, right here in Ashburn. So get out there and and uh, and learn more. Um, 2019 Bagels with the Board of Supervisors. Build your knowledge base about Loudoun County's efforts to relieve traffic congestion, create affordable housing, and improve quality of life in our area by attending DARS Bagels with the Board of Supervisors. Wow. Featured speakers, yeah, that is good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Featured speakers include Chair Phyllis Randall on Friday, February 22nd from 8 to 10 a.m. Supervisors Ralph Buana, I, I'm sorry if I, if I mispronounce, and Jerry Higgins on Friday, March 29th from 8 to 10. So you've got several uh, opportunities and also in supervisors Ron Meyer and Suzanne Velope on Friday, April 26th from 8 to 10. Uh, for more information, again, you can register on our website um, and that's going to be at DAR. So another thing that uh, we need to be as real estate professionals, we need to be involved with our communities. And this is a great way for you to just go to your association and meet our board of supervisors. On number four, help your senior clients take the next step and register for the seniors real estate specialist 
designation course on March the 7th and the 8th. I've always wanted to do this. I've always. Really? Yes. Oh. So, um, for one thing, I'm in that age group. <laughs> and, um, so, you know, who better to help? <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, we're also building a lot of um, 55 and older communities in Loudoun. So it's, you know, it's a good, it's, a, it's definitely a market that's growing. Yeah, it's really timely, you know, as, yeah. As you know, as things change and heat up as far as our job market is concerned, closer in, you know, in the D.C. area, a lot of older, um, older baby boomers, uh, whatever you want to call them, consumers, they want to move out. They don't want to deal with that. And, and that was the case for me. You know, it's one of the reasons why I, I love living in Ashburn is it's a little quieter lifestyle mm -hmm. out here. Um, and, um, it is, you know, to me, it's a little, it's a, a little more neighborly, you know, a lot less congestion. That yeah. is absolutely, even with the construction, even with the road construction and everything else, it is really a lot less congested out here. Um, so you, if you are thinking about getting a designation, our association is going to be offering this. So, um, look at that, um, March the 7th and the 8th. I may take it. I don't know. Just time. I don't know about, you know, my schedule is pretty packed over the next quarter. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it this time. But I do think that um, because of the needs of our um, of our seniors or what they call seniors, I don't think that I'm a senior, but you know, <laughs> we'll, just go. We'll, we'll just leave that right there. So um, Christine sent us an update very quickly, and I was happy that she did. So let me um, go ahead and share that information right here. It is um, about the a live stream that is happening on Friday, this coming oh. Friday. Oh, uh, Join your leadership with Bright MLS and our neighboring Realtor Association. So that is including our NVAR Association, our PWAR Association. You know, Christine has been really, really proactive with getting involved mm -hmm. with our neighboring associations and, um, you know, banding together to provide better education and, and information to our realtors out there in which I, you know, I really appreciate. I think she's one of the best CEOs I've ever seen. But um, anyway, uh, they are going to have a live stream from Bright MLS. Bright MLS interim CEO, Brian De Donnellian, Chief Technology Officer, Frank Major and David Howell, member Bright MLS Board of Directors will discuss plans for moving the system forward with a focus on improving customer support, strengthening the quality and timeliness of the data, listening, learning, and adapting to the rapidly evolving marketplace, ensuring that Bright MLS staff at all levels is focused on the mission of improving our MLS experience. So she's got a link here, and I'm going to post it in the comments here. Let's see if I, that is going to work. There you go. I see it. <laughs> it worked. It worked. Yeah. Okay, so if it doesn't, I'll go back and clean it up later and it will be in there. I'm going to remove it right now for um, the purposes of seeing our faces. <laughs> <laughs> But get involved, guys. Don't just complain. Don't just complain. Go and get educated. Go to classes. Get involved. Become proactive about this. This is our MLS. So please, please don't just sit on the sidelines and complain about it because then nothing gets solved that way. You know, be the change. Be part of the movement towards this. Bright's not going away. It's not going to go away. It's here to stay. And so, you know, that's what I'm going to push my soapbox underneath here. And Karen actually has a great story to tell us today about uh, wire fraud, I believe. Right, Karen? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because you read about this in the news. You read about wire fraud happening to people, but you never think that it actually will come home and touch you. Right. Mm -hmm. 
We had, um, uh, there was a couple of transactions that were back to back. Um, we were the second deal. Um, the transaction that we were handling was contingent on the first deal going through. So that first deal encountered some issues because those buyers, their email got hacked. And so they sent, when they sent the um, their down payment, they did it by wire transfer using email um, wire instructions that they had received in their email. Mm. So fortunately, they were very quick because after they wired it, they called the title company and they said, here is the tracking information for our wire. And the title company was like, we didn't send you, you know, wire instructions. In fact, apparently they had said that they would call them the next day to give the wire instructions. So because they had reached out so quickly um, with the wire confirmation, they were able to immediately ascertain that their email had been hacked. The wire had gone to the was or was in route to the wrong place. So they called, um, they, they reached out to their banks. Um, one bank was a little more helpful than the other one. And eventually, um, and then they got the FBI involved. Mm, so yeah. as they were so quick with um, notifying everybody, they were able to get almost all of the money back so that they could do their purchase and then allow the second transaction to happen. Um, but there's just a couple of key points that I just want to highlight here. One, if you get wire instructions by email, um, call and verify and, and don't use the number that's in the email, right? Because if it's been sent from a, a, a not so nice person or a criminal, obviously they're not going to have um, the correct phone number. Um, and I've done that. I've gotten emails where it looks legit and I'll go and I'll look up the company online and then I'll call them and they'll say, oh yeah, our email got hacked. Mm -hmm. So so call and verify using an independent number that you verified either probably going on the internet and looking up the company. Because if it's a company that's doing business and that's legitimate, they're gonna have a web page, right? With their contact information. Um, so do that um, and then just, just don't trust wire instructions by email. Right. There's always yeah. that suspicious hat. And I always have to have keep in mind, too, when I'm when I'm sending information by email, um, I'm always thinking, OK, is there the possibility that this could get hacked? Is there a better way that I can send this? So I try to make sure that for non-public information, you know, that either I'm um, sending it through a secure portal because we have a secure portal. Um, or I'm putting a password on the um, document and then reaching out independently, not by email, but independently um, and telling what the what the password is. So just really the wire fraud is still happening. It's, yeah. it, you know, it's it's a it's beaten to death. You know, a lot of people have been talking about it, but it still happens and people still get suckered. And, you know, unfortunately, yeah. they they get caught in it. And, um, you know, that's unfortunate, but you just really, really have to be cautious because they're out there. Yes. Yes, they are out there. And yeah. um, uh, I heard once that, you know, in, in a class, you uh -huh. know, about wire fraud, right? that we are particularly targeted and our clients. So mm -hmm. that buyer probably got hacked from yeah. an email from their realtor, yeah. you know, so right. yeah, if and you're we're not, if we're not going out there and informing our clients that this is possible, you know, then we're leaving them open to these kinds right. of hacks, you know, right. during the course of our transactions, because right. we do, we communicate with them through email and all that. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, I, uh, we, in our company, we have a form that we mm -hmm. have to submit with right. every one of our contracts. Right. About wire fraud, and we have to have our clients sign it. Right. You know, it's good, the same things. Yes. A good best. Do not send yeah. money through, yeah. you know, through wire from an email mm -hmm. at all. Right. Period. End of story. You know. Right. A good best practice for realtors is instead of um, getting wire instructions from the title company and then forwarding it to the client, is mm -hmm take themselves out and say, okay, you and the title company need to communicate about how you are bringing your money. Right. Um, because when these lawsuits happen, the realtors are the ones who are getting sued. 
Um, yeah. and realtors have gotten tagged because they forwarded um, their email had gotten hacked and they had forwarded um, faulty wire instructions to their clients. So a couple of them have gotten tagged with some, you know, big hefty judgments. So just don't just take yourself out and have your clients talk directly with the title company. Right. Absolutely. You know, yep. I mean, it's just, it's just best practice, you know, yep. just best yep. practice. Indeed. So, anything else, my friend? No, that's it for now. But no upcoming classes or anything? Oh, else? yes, I do actually. So on the 14th, we have, it's, I know it's not a sexy name, but it's realtor math class. So we're going to be talking about typical um, math computations that a realtor does, um, exploring right with your commission, guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the commission is talked about, yes. But, also, um, you know, some of the taxes that the states like to do, you know, just to help realtors with um, when they're preparing the net spreadsheet, you know, how they yes. can calculate. Mm -hmm. Um, information. So, um, so that's at the Thomas Balch Library from 10 to 11, and we'll have some yummy food and coffee. Um, and then next week, the 21st, I think this is a big one, um, at um, the 1757 Golf Club. Had to think there for a minute. Ooh. We're going to be doing um, a feed your belly, feed your mind, and we're going to be talking, we have a CPA and a financial planner um, so if you're a realtor or maybe perhaps, um, you know, independent contractors, um, this would be good because we're going to be talking about how the tax law changes, um, how that's going to be affecting you. I know Virginia is still working on um, still working on how they're going to be implementing those changes. I, I know they were in the General Assembly yesterday. We're having a discussion about that. Um, but we're going to be talking about those changes and how they affect you when you file your tax returns this year. Um, and then the financial planner can say, OK, so we've got this year. Let's plan, you know, next year. And how, what are some things you can do to help yourself next year? OK, cool. And yummy food. I picked it out. And myself. Yummy food. Well, I like 1757. I think that's a really nice location. Oh, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. easy you know, to get to. So, yep. And that'll be from 12 to 2 on February 21. All right, great. So you'll post a link to how to register in the yeah. comments after the broadcast. Would that sure. Yep. Okay. And I know that it's not sexy, guys. The math part, especially, you know, we we as typically as realtors, and I teach principles and practices, and I always tell right. potential realtors that um, well, the one calculation that you'll never get wrong is how much money you're going to make. You yep. know. Yep. And we don't typically like math, but our clients ask us these questions. How much yeah. am I going to make? How much yep. is it going to cost me? Yep. You know? And you should be able to answer that question. You should mm -hmm. be able to answer that question and very easily. It's not hard. No. Um, so that's an important class right there. And of course, as business owners, yes. we should be on top of our taxes and on top of our um, on the changes in our taxes and running a business like a business, not yep. as a salesperson. Right. You know? And this is another place where realtors really do get in trouble. So thank you so much for bringing that to us. Yeah. And, um, we'll see you next week. Okay. We'll right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Come we'll next online week. with me next week. Let's do yep. it again mm -hmm. and uh, take care everybody. All right. Thanks for joining us.